What's up, my peeps? Real quick, don't forget to hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to leave them comments. This is going to be another story about uh, growing up in the hood, so I'm going to jump right into it. This video is about one crazy night in a small town or pueblo known as Ocotillo, Arizona, or Ocotillo, as uh, non-Spanish speakers like to say it, you know. I spent a lot of time there during my high school years, mostly partying. And like I've stated in previous videos, I had many friends that lived in this small town. And it was uh, mostly Yaqui uh, Mexican Indians. My homie JV and his brother MV that I talked about in a previous video and uh, many others that I'll mention in this story. We had a lot of keg parties bonfires, and even an occasional hayride. <laughs> so anyway, on this particular night, I think we had two kegs, and we had a large bonfire going. There were tons of people there from our high school. It was going really good. There was even a couple of the older guys hanging out with us, uh, you know, just kind of making sure everybody was cool. And, uh, you know, they were kind of like playing, playing the part of security, you know, keeping us young idiots in line. So um, there was two really big guys, um, older guys, like in their late 20s, early 30s. We called them the gorillas because that's what they looked like, a couple of big-ass gorillas. And uh, one of them kept the Tech 9 in his ride, you know, just in case. And there was uh, another older guy. Uh, we'll call him R.D. Those are his initials. He was a, he was a really cool dude. He was, he was a tough dude, too. And uh, he was really cool with us. He was the one that usually um, helped us get our liquor, you know, beer, kegs, whatever, you know. And he was he also provided us smoke if we needed that too, you know, some sticky green. So um, we were all feeling good, you know. Um, the night started out real good, and there was a lot of pretty girls there from our school. We were all just chilling, having a really good time. But of course, you know, like I said in some of my previous videos, my friends were rowdy as hell. And uh, especially my one friend, uh, T, you know, that's his initial, his first name. He was, uh, he was half Apache and half Mexican. So if, you know, anybody knows anything about Apaches, <laughs> you know, that's kind of a bad mix to mix a, a, an Apache and, a, and Mexican. You get a really rowdy individual. Anyways, he always wanted to fight. Sometimes he would even pick a fight with one of us if he was drunk enough and if there was nobody else to pick a fight with, you know, nobody else around. So uh, out of the blue, he just turns and, like, pushes me and says, come on, let's spar. And I'm like, man, chill, you know, chill out, dude. And, um, you know, he was the one that actually got me into, into kickboxing when I was uh, in my teenage, you know, teenage years. Um, we used to spar and, and train together and everything, but, um, you know, I already knew how to box, um, before I started training with him, uh, you know, I, I knew how to box, you know, for my, uh, my older brother, you know, kind of taught me that's another story. You know, he used to, uh, use me as a human punching bag or a, like a forced sparring partner. So I kind of had to, I was forced to learn how to box. He wasn't nice about it, <laughs> you know, but um, anyway, that's another story. But, uh, you know, I was like, no, nah, man, chill out. You know, I'm trying to have a good time, drink and just, you know, chill out or hang out. And uh, but of course, he didn't listen. He uh, he came at me through a couple of punches, you know, and I, I just ducked and moved to the side and I grabbed him. I grabbed him and I slammed him against my truck. And I yelled in his chase, chill, you know, in his face, I said, chill the F out, dude. And uh, he pushed me off hard and started bouncing around and said, come on, you know. So I was like, all right, let's go then, you know. So our friends were all standing around, you know, they had seen this like many times. So they're just like watching, you know, like ready to enjoy a show, I guess, you know. So, um, you know, he was he was really good. He was uh he was like really coordinated. He could like he could like jump up and do helicopter kicks like like the ones Van Damme used to do in all his movies, you know? Them real fancy he jump high up and do a spinning kick type of stuff. But uh, um I pretty much knew his style from sparring with him and 
you know, I always knew when he was about to do one of those because he would kind of squat down a little bit, bef- you know, so he could l- jump up high in the air and get that, you know, that elevation for his kick, you know. So right when he jumped up and threw his spinning kick, I ducked under, and when he landed, I caught him right in the mouth with a straight right. Boom. <laughs> I didn't really mean to hit him like that hard, but, you know, we were just in the moment, and it, it happened, you know. So he went down on his back, his mouth was bleeding, and he was dazed, you know, and I just kind of like, I kind of walked over to him, and, and I stood over him, and I, you know, I, I asked him if he was okay, and, uh, you know, um, he was like kind of dazed, like shaking his head, so I, I grabbed him by the hand, and I helped him up, and then we, you know, everything was back to cool after that, you know, we, I gave him a fresh beer, and, you know, it was party back on, you know. <laughs> so uh, we got back to drinking and smoking after that, you know, a little bit of action. So anyway, later that night, we started to notice there was a lot of people coming we didn't recognize. And I'd say there was like at least like 75 to 100-ish people there. It was getting pretty crowded. Like it was turning into a pretty big party. So, um, you know, a lot of them were uh, like... Uh, Cowboys, you know, <laughs> I don't have anything against cowboys, you know, but um, they were like just dudes we didn't recognize. And we found out later on they were a bunch of cowboys from Gilbert, you know, <laughs> Gilbert, Arizona. <laughs> so, um, you know, don't like I said, don't get me wrong. You know, it wasn't a racial thing. We had plenty of white friends on our side, too. Just not cowboys. <laughs> they were mostly like skaters and just like cool white dudes, you know, they like to party with us. So, um, you know, we, we kind of knew it was going to be a fight because they were all on one side of the bonfire and we were all on the other side and a hundred percent, man, they started it. They were like giving us dirty looks and, uh, you know, so we were giving them back. We were like, Hey man, this is our damn party. Are you going to show up and start looking at us all crazy and stuff? Nah, bro, we ain't having it. But, um, you know, we try to keep it cool. This went on for maybe like an hour until like, no joke, like I'm not even exaggerating. This big, this big young uh, cowboy looking dude, about six foot and pretty hefty sized dude. He was a big boy. Um, and, you know, we were all high school age, you know. Um, he steps forward and just out of nowhere yells, I'll kick any freaking Mexican's ass here. Like, no joke. That's what he said. And we're all just standing there looking at him like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, we're like, what the hell? And before one of us youngsters could say anything, our older friend, uh, RD, you know, like I mentioned earlier, who was like in his, uh, he was like in his late 20s. You know, he yelled back, man, F you shit kicker, you know? And uh, so that big young cowboy comes forward and best, but you know, basically was like, let's go then, you freaking beaner. <laughs> you know, that's what he said. He called him a freaking beaner, you know. So um, before we could even like blink an eye, man, RD ran at him. I mean, he like charged this dude. And it was crazy because we all thought RD was going to start bombing on him, like punching him, right? I don't even, I don't remember him throwing one punch. He tackled the dude and started like strangling him. I mean, like choking him with with both hands around homeboy's neck. And, um, I mean, he was like choking the life out of homeboy. It even scared us, you know, and we like, we started trying to pull him off. And, uh, you know, and then the, the, that cowboy's girlfriend, you know, I can understand why she got scared. You know, she saw her, her dude getting the life choked out of him, you know. Um, she, uh, she comes running and jumps on his back. And uh, so then Roddy's lady jumped on her, and that's pretty much what started it right there, man, was um, everybody started jumping in after that, and it just turned into a big old brawl, man. And uh, so at first, you know, we were like, we were trying to break it up, but then it just got crazy, man. My friend T, of course, was one of the first ones. He he jumped in and... uh, you know, just started bombing on, on dudes. And then, um, 
you know, uh, he was just like blasting, like just hitting anybody he didn't recognize that was close to us. So, um, I mean, it pretty much, you know, turned into just uh, like uh, uh, pretty much anybody that was from our high school that wasn't a cowboy was against all of them cowboys from Gilbert, you know. <laughs> so um, even some of the girls were fighting. It was nuts. So I remember my friend uh, DG, who was another uh, super tough homie of mine. He was he was uh, he was a pretty big dude too. We were about the same size, um, and we used to do some sparring too. He was really he was really good at boxing. Um, he was fighting this other big cowboy, and uh, you know I'll give him a lot of respect, man, because them dudes were tough. You know I'll give them their props. They were tough. They weren't no pussies. You know. So, um, you know, they were going at it like toe to toe and Danny was, was boxing him up. I mean, Danny was like teeing off on this dude, but dude was tough, man. He, he would go down and then pop right back up. He wouldn't stay down, you know? And so like, um, you know, so they're going at it and, um, So like, I remember after after um, after I I laid a couple of dudes out, um, you know, just caught them, you know, a couple of uh, like an overhand right to one dude and a left hook to to another dude, and um, they were down for the count, <laughs> you know, and uh, so I was like, I look at my friend DG. And uh, he was still going at it with the same dude. And I was like, damn, I was surprised because uh, my homeboy, DG, he used to put he used to put dudes out too, like quick. So this dude was just like extra tough or something. So like, you know, some people might say, oh, that's messed up. You stole on him or whatever. But hey, it was an all out brawl. I got punched in the back of the head. You know, um, I think I got hit with something. I don't know what. But anyways, um, I got tired of watching him, you know, you know, going at it with this dude and, and homeboy just kept popping back up after every time he hit him. So I got a starting run and I just wound up, man, with the overhand right. And I just I caught homeboy right on the chin. Bow! And, <laughs> and he went down and didn't get up, you know. <laughs> so uh, DG was like, damn, thanks, homie. <laughs> that, he was like, that dude was like a Terminator, you know, <laughs> or like uh, like Jason or Mike Myers or some shit, you know. So um uh, yeah, so that was pretty much it for homeboys. So like, um, right around, right about then, we noticed they were starting to like grab all their dudes, and they were starting to jump in the trucks, and they were like taking off, man. They were peeling off, you know. And um, you know, uh, our homie RD, you know, the one I talked about earlier, the older older guy, he had a really nice lowered Chevy truck. Um, you know, I forgot to mention everybody had their trucks, cars parked near or around the bonfire, kind of like in, in a circle around the bonfire. And there was this girl from our school, uh, her, initial, her initials are uh, TC, and she was standing in front of, uh, of Artie's truck, kind of like leaning up against the, like the front grill. She was just watching, like not participating or, or fighting anybody or anything. And uh, so a bunch of them, um, you know, them dudes from Gilbert, uh, they jumped into like a big dually truck and uh, I don't think they did it on purpose. I don't know, but instead of going forward, they put it in reverse. And when they went back, they hit the front of RD's truck. And remember I said, um, this girl TC, she was leaning, she was standing in front of the truck, leaning against the grill. So when they hit the front of her truck, man, we thought she was dead or like, we thought her legs were going to be crushed, right? She screamed and then fell down when they pulled away. She hit the ground crying and like moving around in pain. So we all freaked the hell out. And we, you know, we like thought her legs were crushed, like I said. And we all ran over there and started checking her. But like when we looked at her, all she had was like a, like a red mark on both of her legs. And, um, you know, the thing that saved her was... Luckily, on the front of his bumper, you know, like a lot of trucks have, like, those two things that stick out. I don't know what you call them, but they're like bumper guards or something. That saved her legs for sure. 
you know, maybe her life, I don't know, but definitely her legs, both of her legs probably would have been crushed. But anyway, um, you know, so uh, they left in a hurry, you know, they, they all peeled off and, and got out of there. And, you know, we thought it was the end of it, you know, but we were wrong. We were, um, you know, we pretty much like, you know, we got back to having a good time and just drinking and stuff after, you know, we made sure that they, they were really leaving, you know. Um, and so, of course, we were talking about what had just happened and like just saying how crazy it was and everything. When about an hour later, we started to hear like revving engines, you know, and like peeling out, you know at the entrance of where you come into the neighborhood. So like anybody that's from the area and, and is familiar with Ocotillo knows like, it's kind of like, um, there's only one way in and one way out. And it was like this bridge that went across a, like a big canal. And um, on one side you had like the old um, Bash's warehouse. And then you had like some other buildings on the other side, like, I don't know what they are, but um, that was like the only way in and out from from that you know little little town little pueblo so we kind of like walked out because like where we were having our party was like it's like a bunch of like really big old trees you know so you kind of have to rock walk out towards like the road to look down and see towards the the entrance so we seen um we seen at least three trucks with people in the cabs and in the back and they were waving something in the air and then a couple of them let off some gunshots up in the air. And I was like, damn, I had just let my friend EJ um, take my truck. Uh, he was going to pick up some girls that we knew. And they had my pistol and my uh, pistol grip uh, 12 gauge pump behind the seat. So he had both of my guns, which maybe was a good thing. I don't know. But um, I was kind of wishing I had them, you know, right about then. But, um, you know, like I said, he was going to pick up these females we knew. And, you know, what I would f what I would find out later when he finally showed up with them girls was that EJ and the two girls showed up shortly after them uh, Gilbert, them Gilbert Cowboys came back. So um, they got chased by them. They like chased them around and like terrorized them and stuff, you know, and uh, them girls were like all crying and stuff. But um like I said earlier, one of the gorillas had a Tech 9 in his Chevy S10 Blazer. So he got it out and he got it ready. And about that time, my friend JV, who uh, you know, who I mentioned before in another video, ran home, um, you know, because he lived like just right around the corner and grabbed his dad's M14 rifle. You know, his dad was a Vietnam vet. And um so, you know, we hear the loud roar of engines. And like I said, they were in three big trucks. Um, they came hauling ass, like, towards where we were at. And they, like, shot up in the air a couple times. And uh, it looked like hunting rifles, you know, like, probably, like, mostly 22s. But they might have had, like, something bigger, too, you know. But they came to a stop, like, maybe 50 yards away from us. And they started yelling all kinds of stuff, you know, like saying they were going to put some. They, they, were, they said they were going to put down some no good Mexicans tonight. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying that, you know, I'm just trying to say exactly what they said. You know, that's what they told us. We, we're about to put down some no good Mexicans tonight, you know. But, um, you know, so we were all like we took cover behind our cars and stuff and we were yelling shit back, you know. And, uh they yelled some more stuff and then they fired off a couple more shots in the air. Then all of a sudden our friend or uh yeah, our our homie J V comes running back. We didn't even know he was like headed back. And he lets off some automatic gunfire into the air. I mean like like a machine gun fire, you know, like a uh an assault rifle it was an M fourteen from his dad's uh full auto, you know, M fourteen rifle. So uh, the gorilla joins in and lets off about five or six shots from his little tech nine, you know, and uh, 
you know, he yelled, he yelled back at them, we got some freaking guns too, you freaking shit kickers. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, uh, that was pretty much all they needed to hear, man. They they peeled off again and they got the hell out of there. And, and this time they didn't come back, you know? And they were all ducking down in the backs of their trucks and, and just hauling ass out of there. So we just kind of watched them drive off and, you know, we walked out to make sure they, they were leaving again. And, uh, so right about then, that was when, when my homie EJ comes flying up in my truck with the two honeys. He went to go pick up, and they were bawling their eyes out, man. They wanted to, they wanted to go home. <laughs> they were bawling their pretty little eyes out, you know. And uh, he was like, man, what the fuck? Man, we just got chased by a truck full of rednecks. <laughs> and he was a white dude, too, so this is a white boy saying this, you know. And uh, he pretty much missed the whole thing. Um, but, uh, you know, we filled them in and, and you know, the two girls were still crying, saying they wanted to g just go home. But we calmed them down and, you know, and uh, assured them they were safe, you know, and and uh, so they decided to stay and, and chill with us. But uh, anyway, we had many wild nights out there partying, but I would definitely say this was, this was probably the wildest. And, uh, you know, so that's another one of my stories for now. Till next time, your homie Big Cisco. Peace.